Hello YouTubers. Yeah, today I'm just showing you that uh, I used scrap metal, made a service bucket 16 inch by using everything from a scrap pile of some throw away material. And uh, so this is the uh, first stage of a service bucket 16 inch, which is used for sewer, storm, uh, drain, pipe, or natural gas, which is a uh, building code allow 16 inch to accommodate 4 inch pipe. Anything for more than 4 inch, you'd need to 24 bucket or 30 inch bucket. So this is a 16 inch bucket. I just roughed in, tacked together with the 3 sixteenths of a plate by using scrap metal. Okay, it's still pretty much in rough shape. I had to weld the seam together, and uh, so I'll just flip it over and uh, see the inside. So you can tell. The reason there's a seam in the middle is that I have a tough time with my very limited workshop equipment, literally bent over by hand. So it's a tough job, but I did it. The full sheet of 16 inch wide, I can't budget. But if I cut it into eight, slightly less than eight, I can just bend it over using my sharp vise. See this little puny vise? It's about uh, five inches wide. So I busted it twice once, I weld it together, now it's still going. And uh, here I'm showing you what I tack it together with my stick welder. It's a 200 amps liquid carbonic. Has been with me for 20 some years. Works really well, but it's just AC, it's not AC DC. Would be nice to have AC DC. I do have a little cute I 60 cutter where I use this to, to cut a service material from my salvaged scrap metal. So I got some tubes, channels, and so on. There's nothing good, it's all scrap metal, but here we go. I'll come back to this service bucket. It's the front finishing width, it's 16 inch. Uh, the cutting blade, you can tell, it's a 5 8 real cutting blade of a damaged loader or something. See, this is the full stock someone gave to me. This is a full stock of a cutting blade of a kind of a front end loader or back hole. So I cut a piece off, 5 sixteenths of thickness, so just inter fit into the front. I might put the teeth on there, I might not have to put the teeth on there because the service trench is not digging rocks. Uh, a cutting blade would do just fine. Okay, I'll show you. So, so the back is look like that. I'll leave those holes there, it doesn't bother me at all. But the curve, it's not fully matched. I'll trim and fix it. So, this is the first stage of my service bucket where I designed tapered material where the back okay I'll show you a little bit the back actually is 15 and a half when it's finished the front width the cutting width now is 15 inch and a half so there's going to be a cutting cutting edge on both sides instead of against the bucket so the cutting edge will make the uh, bucket last a little longer, at the same time reduce the friction between the trench and the bucket. And here will be two side cutting air would be installed. So this is long enough for, thank you so much YouTubers for my PS, uh, BS on those little roughing service bucket. This is uh, the first stage. Next stage is going to be adding some reinforcement, could be a angle iron or some sort of a plate to reinforce the earring installation 
and then baking up as well. And as well, going to be the strips, going to be six strips. They call them a wearing and tear strips to enforce this 3 sixteenths of bucket plate at the same time providing lots more wear and tear. Great, thank you so much to, uh, to watch my little scrap metal into a service bucket. Anyway, folks doesn't have a lot of money. This is the best way to do it. At the same time I can weld, cut and so on and so forth. Have a very nice day and uh, I'll put a second phase of finished product all trimmed up, grinded down and then painted over. Thanks a lot. Have a very nice day.